Hey there, and welcome back to the Virtual Cafe for another coffee combo about business finances. I'm your host, Kerry Zarb, and I am joined by Kim White. We invite you to join us at our table with your favourite brew. Let's pull up our chairs and get into today's episode. Come on, let's go. It's coffee time. Kim, I've got an emergency. What is it, Kerry? I have no idea. <laughs> And welcome to Simply Biz Beans. <laughs> I should have thought of that before I thought I thought of the line. I didn't think of the emergency that was coming behind it because I just drew a blank. You know, seriously, Carrie, whenever you think about emergencies and you think about your finances, though, just as abrupt as that was, it's usually how they happen. Mm. Like we can't plan for everything. We can't plan. We want to. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure we have a plan, but I think you are brilliant when you talk about having an emergency fund. Mm. And this is nothing new, Kim. This is not new and to the world. Everybody has heard this, I hope, and if not, well, if you're hearing it for the first time, you're hearing it here. However, it's not brand new. My concept of emergency funds is about your business. However, they've existed in personal finances, I would say, forever. And then when you adopt the same principle into your business, it bears the same significance because we have all of those things headed our way, whether we want it or not, when we want it or not. It's never a good time. It's never a good time. And no one's got the little crystal ball, you know, being able to sit there going, okay, so Thursday, 10 a.m., bam, that's what's going to happen. Now I can make a plan. It, do, it just doesn't work. You said it, Kim. It, it doesn't happen. So therefore, we need to be prepared for it. But I don't want people to panic about this. This is not one of those things in your business finances where you need to go, oh, I don't have emergency funds. Oh, 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 what do I do? Where do I start? How, how do I do it? You don't need to panic because there's time. There's always time. And yes, we don't know if tomorrow is going to bring whatever it is. However, if you sit there in that stuck zone, that paralyzed point, the deer in headlights of oh, panic and fright in that moment, it's not going to help you. I think it shuts down your creativity to solve the problem, Carrie. Correct. It does. I think it keeps you from thinking about how to be creative, even in your finances. I think there's something to be said about if you're not prepared and something happens, you know, be creative in the fact of, can you not pay out as much for expenses? Can you lessen your expenses for a short term? Can you, you know, maybe take on extra work for mm -hmm. a period of time? There are, there are solutions all around there. But Carrie, I appreciate the fact that you have spoken openly for a very long time about having an emergency fund so that you don't even have to do those kind of things. Mm -hmm. That you can do business as usual because you've been planning and and having that that place that you are tucking away. You know, I think personally they call it the rainy day fund, but. Mm -hmm. Business-wise, it's the, oh, snap, I didn't know that was going to happen fund. <laughs> Kim, I love that framing because that is exactly right. And I have spoken about this before. Uh, don't ask me what episode number because I'm not great at that. But there is a previous episode and it's called Rainy Day Funds. So I'm not going to allude that, again, this conversation is anything new. However, I did want to discuss it with Kim because I knew she'd bring some spicy angles to this conversation in the virtual cafe. And also, I want to talk about it again and again and again because of its importance. And again, not panic. Don't panic, peoples. No need to panic. But just be aware of how this can change your business finances by having an emergency fund, having a backup plan. We all need plan A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the things. However, what is that going to do for us? Well, let me tell you, when I can't say the word, and if I did, I'd have to beep it out. When that hits the fan, then, and only then, are you going to be thankful? 
that you had that emergency fund. When it doesn't happen, when that doesn't hit the fan, that's when we become complacent and we become a little bit in this zone of, well, nothing's happened for six months, so I'll just grab that money, if you've already got it, I'll grab that money because I'm going to put it into X or I didn't, you know, quite have enough income this month, so I'll just pull it out of there and I'll borrow it. I'll borrow it from there because I'm going to put it back. Be careful, guys. There's a difference between I need to borrow it because I'm a bit short versus that hit the fan and now I need it. So if you intend to borrow from it, I'm not saying don't do it. It's all your money, people. Do what you want with your own money. However, make a really firm commitment to yourself that you are going to put it back. Just because nothing's happened doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Kim, do you need another coffee? I do, Carrie. Okay, why don't we just take a quick break, rest our voices, grab that other cup, and we'll be right back. See you in a minute. Do you find your finances confusing or overwhelming? Well, guess what? You're not alone. I'm Kerry Zab, and I am your financial designer. It's time to take away those sleepless nights, all the stress and pressure we feel from those flippin' digits. Finances can be hard. This is why your seat at my virtual cafe is reserved in the Biz Beans Club. Our gatherings are held on the third Monday of each month at 6pm Central Time and I'd love you to join us to ask questions, gain access to resources so that you can get in control of your business finances. This is where coffee meets money. Are you ready? What are you waiting for? It's time for you to be in the driver's seat of your finances. You know, Carrie, I know people who have literally gone and bought and like bought a new car mm-hmm. because they had a flat tire or because they couldn't get their car to start. They were frustrated. And your goal and my goal for all the podcasts really that we do are to encourage people to look down the road in long term and to stay in business. We love entrepreneurs. We love people who are not as well, but we are here to serve the entrepreneur community and the business owners. And I feel like that's the same situation that can happen in a business when you come to those oh snap moments. I think you can look at closing your business. I think you can look at getting rid of it and thinking, okay, I have to go start another one because this one's broken. Mm -hmm. And it's very dangerous to think that way because whatever's going on that's wrong in your business, it follows you. And Mm. it follows you because you didn't learn the lesson or it follows you because you've got to learn how to deal with something. And, you know, that's not always the case, but that (laughs) I see it often that people will come to these hard places. They didn't plan for an emergency. Now they're in this position and they just want to close their business and, you know, give up. Mm. And we don't want that to happen. That's why we're having these hard conversations is we don't want you to quit based on an emergency that you weren't planning for. We'd rather be the bad guys and come Mm. in and tell you to think about having a plan before you need it. Yeah. Exactly. It's that safety net. It becomes, you know, if we want to play on trapezes, is that the word? Trapezes? (laughs) Is that the word, Kim? I don't even know. Trapezes, but I don't know if trapezes is or not, but that's pretty funny. (laughs) (laughs) I just made up a word or extended it. I'm not exactly sure. Sorry, peoples. Uh, I think when we, you know, have an entrepreneurial life, there's a lot of risk involved. Our Mm. livelihoods can be on the line when we're an entrepreneur. So therefore, we get that opportunity to give ourselves that safety net that we need. And that's what I want people to kind of think of mentally in their minds, that an emergency fund is your safety net. So if we're going to play at at high heights, and Kerry does not do that at all, (laughs) but if we're going to play up there and, and live a little bit dangerously because we, you know, are in business and we're unfortunately driven to this almighty cause of what 
we, we've got going on and where we want our life to go. And when I say unfortunately, most of the time it's fortunately. Therefore, we need it. We need that, that backing. We need to back ourselves is where I'm going with this. But Kim, you also said about buying a car to avoid a flat tyre. Okay, so I might have traded a car before I needed to change to the tyres. Let me explain. My mind, I actually said to my husband, oh my, I'm trading in this car for a new, newer car. I didn't even have to change the tyres on that sucker. Like I was like, that was my win for trading in that car. I got, I got a full 60,000 Ks or whatever it was on that car, traded it in, didn't have to buy tyres. Woo! <laughs> But I didn't do it because it was flat. I didn't have a flat tire and traded it. It was just circumstantial. But that was my little bonus <laughs> points out of it. <laughs> that is funny, Kiri. No, I I think whenever we're talking about that, it's the decisions we make based on the emergency or mm. the situation versus looking at the big picture. Oh yeah. Um. And I and I will confess, I've made a lot of melty decisions. Like I've made a lot of decisions on the wrong thing not knowing the whole picture or and we can't always know most of the time we don't know the entire picture of something but we can do as much as we can mm -hmm. and i think that's the encouragement i get from you every time we have these kind of conversations is what am i doing to put a little money back for the emergencies what am i doing to prepare if you know something does happen what, what am I doing? And I think it's really great wisdom on your part, Carrie, to keep visiting this mm. in different ways. Because yeah. we have, we've had this conversation, but not necessarily this, this way. Mm -hmm. And I need a reminder. I don't mm. know about you, but oh, I yes. love it when you remind me. Oh yeah. And I wonder, Kim, if there isn't even a subconsciousness to Carrie of bringing up these conversations to keep reminding me. As much as I love the numbers and I love the beans and I play with them every single day, I need reminding. I'm I'm not perfect in this space. I'm still working it all out just like everybody else. And I will catch myself many a times pressing the button on a silly thing that I know better than to do. However, I still press the button. We'll talk about confessions later, probably not. And <laughs> But it's true because we do, and we do need to hear it different ways. I love that you added that, Kim, because if we're not careful, if I just told you, get an emergency fund, this is what it's for, this is why you need it, is that going to, re like, really, will we actually, that's maybe not the right conversation for everyone and for particular people. So I do want to talk about this and don't be surprised if it resurfaces again, folks, because why not? Because it is important. We need to be prepared. And with our finances, the first thing, in my opinion, that can actually railroad, is that a word? When you railroad somebody, you like force them into something. That's, that's what... So when we train wreck <laughs> in business, I think a lot of the times it is probably a very high percentage and I'll have to go and look this statistic up Kim because I don't do my research very well but I think there's a high percentage to do with the finances of a business mm -hmm. stopping to operate or a business owner stopping their business like you said Kim I think that's a high percent we need to find out that stat and then even maybe pop it in the show notes if we can if not sorry guys letting you down but I think it's real. I think I call it the engine room of your business is your finances. So therefore, it's like not putting oil in your car. If you don't put oil in your car, oh my God, the cars. <laughs> but if you don't put... Doing great with the cars. <laughs> oh, the cars and planes, all the things. If you don't put engine oil in your car, what happens? It stops. Mm -hmm. I have and no it... idea where I was going with that. <laughs> well... But I think you, I think you do, Carrie, because anytime you're not handling your finances, that's a huge place that you can really honestly go out of business. And I think that the same way that you put oil in your car engine, you also can stop putting oil in, stop dealing with that, 
ignore the change oil, ignore all of that stuff. And then you end up with an engine that doesn't work. Mm. And I think that's, that's what I took from what you're saying. And I do want to point out every single episode, you are talking directly to me in all the things. I giggle because I think, ooh, I need to do that better. And ooh, I need to do that. And ooh, I need. So if no one else um, resonates with all this, Carrie, you're you're helping me. How's that? <laughs> Carrie is talking away and she's on mute. <laughs> I will take that, Kim. That is a win for me and I will take it. And yes, I was talking on mute and hopefully I repeated what I said. I have no idea. I had pressed the button over here and forgot all about it. Sorry, Pete. <laughs> I thought at first you might be cussing and I was giggling because I thought, well, that saves the beeps in the episode. But... I've tried to stay away from the buttons, Kim. I'm trying to behave myself <laughs> because I may have over buttoned another recording that just made it probably a mess to edit. So therefore, I'm trying not to press the buttons. However, Kim, I think um, this is all very valid and so it, it's really hitting notes for me to talk about this again because when we're talking about the car and the engine and the oil my little wiper washer thing has been telling me for months that it's got nothing in it i'm not even joking i am terrible with that i'm good with the oil and all the other things but when it comes to those wa wiper washers the little bzz, 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 oh my goodness no it just uh, every single time it comes up i'm like oh yeah uh-huh okay so true confession here carrie since we're making all these confessions <laughs> i might not put gas or diesel or whatever in the vehicle because i want to go to the very nth degree which drives my husband crazy but if the bug juice is what i call it runs out for the windshield I want that done today. <laughs> I don't want that stuff on my window, so I need that. And I think that that's humorous, but I think it's also a good point for this conversation because what bothers you may not bother me and what bothers me may not bother you. Mm. But when it comes to an emergency fund, this is universal. Everyone needs to take a step forward taking care of that whether you do percentage wise you know you set a certain percentage back or you have a dollar amount you're trying to get to whatever it is don't feel like and this is my opinion but don't feel like you have to do it all today but start working towards that and keeping it and i like what you said carrie about if you borrow from it if you do have an emergency and you have to pay something out of it make sure you restock that yeah. make sure that you're paying attention to that where you don't come up against another you know oh snap moment and don't have it the next time and kim to add to what you said i am just going to say this out loud for everyone to hear that it needs to be considered as part of your expenses to contribute to your emergency fund so if you take nothing else away from this episode except that is you have to put that in your I hate the budget word can't stand the budget word but you do need to have a line in your budget to put towards your emergency fund and that's how you get started kim just like as a kid saving some pocket money you know a dollar a week whatever it has to be that fits into your mm, ugly word budget then that's where you start a dollar a week, five dollars a week, five dollars a month, whatever you can squeeze in there if things are tight, that's where you start. Keep it small. Again, you know me and my bite-sized pieces. I love my bite-sized pieces. So therefore, but what you said, Kim, just keep going. There's no limit to your emergency fund, by the way, guys. Let me say that out loud. Yes, you'll decide what your buffer zone is, what your base minimum is for your emergency fund based on what could happen and how, how big a net you want under you should that occur. So you get to make that choice. You get to make the choice to start building it and you can start today. If you don't already have it, you can definitely start straight away. But don't put pressure on yourself. 
don't panic don't get a fright just just make a plan to get started on building that emergency fund and see where it goes set your limit reach your cap and stay there or just keep building it doesn't matter so Carrie I want to I want to like push really quickly on one like very practical thing that I have done that I probably learned from you and I'm gonna say that you have taught me so much but one of the things is don't have the same account for your emergency fund because it's too easy to shop it's too easy to spend it on other things it's too easy to forget that what it's for and to have a separate account or a separate place you keep it is in my opinion one of the most valuable things I have learned about an emergency fund is even if it's a small amount do it in a different account keep it out of the mainstream of what your expenses come out of otherwise you may spend your emergency fund like every every single time you have one (laughs) kim i've spoken about it before and i'll I'll probably resurface that one a, a million times over as well because having those funds separated is key to maintaining them. If we can see, feel, touch, smell, taste, all that kind of stuff, and it's kind of morphed into other money, that's the risk. That's the risk right there that we're actually going to chip into it, accidentally eat away at it, accidentally spend it. So I agree with you, Kim, and I I have spoken in a previous episode about setting up your bank accounts and having that separation. If you need to go to a different banking institution, if you're not good with money and you can't potentially not touch it when you really don't want to touch it, put it in a separate bank. Put it in a different company, bank or business or institution, whatever they're called, because that helps you. It creates that disconnect so that you are less tempted to accidentally touch it or accidentally on purpose touch it. And that, that's that's the truth. That's the truth right there. It is, scary. Yep. It is. Yep. So separation is a good idea, Kim. If you can do that, separate the funds if you can't be trusted and you do need to do that for yourself, highly encourage. And again, small amounts, chip away at it. And when I say chip away at it, add to it so that it does grow <laughs> and, and get you that safety net that you want. I think it's a very, very valuable, Carrie. And thank you for encouraging everyone to do that. I am grateful for you, Carrie. Mm, thank you, Kim. Well, Kim, I think this is a wrap. We better get out of here because I, I don't know about you. I think we should grab a couple of takeaways and hit the road. Yeah? Yeah. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Kim. I'll see you next week. I'll be there. Thanks for joining us in the virtual cafe. You can follow the show to be notified of future episodes. And if you're enjoying this podcast, we encourage you to leave a rating or personal review. Until next time, happy biz beans to you. No beans were harmed during the production of this podcast. Information contained in this podcast should be taken as general advice only and your personal circumstances have not been taken into account. It is recommended that you seek financial advice from a professional who is licensed to do so. If you choose to act upon the general advice shared, you do so at your own